Hey everyone, how's it going? I hope you're all doing great and following the three H's of the channel. And in this video, I got a little bit of everything for you. Tall, shadowy figures, missing time, weird creatures, a couple cryptids, and more. If that sounds like something you're interested in, pull up a stump with me and let's jump into it. Thank you for watching. I grew up and I still live in Oregon. I love the coast, and I go there all the time. My dad and I, this one particular time, go off a trail. We went off a little ways to explore the gullies and the old growth. We came up this giant rock that was on a beach. And if you know the Pacific Northwest coast, you know that there are lots of rocks with little but thick groves of trees. This one was especially thick. We climb up the side and bushwhack it into the trees. It tired going at first, and we reach this clearing in what seems to be the very center of the rock. Suddenly, we notice that the birds and the other animals aren't making noises anymore. There's only the sound of the surf. I get a little uneasy, a little weird feeling, and then we begin to hear this tapping sound, like somebody is knocking a branch against a tree. More and more of these sounds pop up until it's all the way around the clearing. Dad has had enough, pushes me forward, and yells, we gotta get the F out. We both book it, and something is crashing in the trees behind us. We reach the edge of the rock, and we just jump into the sand. I risk a look back as we run down the beach. There were three long, gray, hairless faces peering at us from behind the bushes. I turn around and just sprint, having had enough of whatever they were. You experience a lot of weird stuff, especially in the Pacific Northwest. I think that's why I love it here so much. I live in New Jersey. And this state is quite famous for the amount of haunted roads that it has. Long story short, I was 12 at the time. My older brother picked me up from a friend's house that I was visiting about 40 minutes away. It was late, around 12.30 a.m. It was a fairly remote area of New Jersey, near the Pine Barrens. So there was basically nobody on the road. About 15 minutes into our trip back, we got onto a remote looking two lane road with basically no intersections or turns for miles. All of a sudden, we're both startled by the flash of high beams right behind us. It's this older looking black pickup truck that's tailgating us, basically a foot or two behind. I've never heard a vehicle so loud in my entire life, especially not since. It sounded like a straight piped exhaust, but twice as loud, at least. We could physically feel the ground shake whenever its engine roared. This went on for about 20 to 30 seconds, and as you'd expect, me and my brother are freaking out and losing it, going over twice the speed limit to try and get away from this thing. But this truck didn't move like a normal car because no matter how fast we went, it always remained perfectly at the same distance behind us, almost like it was floating. And all of a sudden, the lights go off. It just disappears. Keep in mind that we were still on the road with no turns or intersections until a few miles ahead of us, so there was no reasonable explanation for anything that had just happened. We both came back traumatized and didn't mention anything about it for days. I found out years later that it actually is a more common occurrence than I thought. There are many accounts of people that got ran off in that particular road late at night by an old black pickup truck, and some of them actually died from flipping their cars when they hit a certain embankment on the side of the road when ran off. Creepy stuff.
So I was a pretty naive and clueless kid, and this is something really bizarre that happened when I was quite young. I was seven years old, but several other family members can confirm this story. I just don't remember a whole lot of it. So I was in the woods with my much older cousin. He was hunting. I got bored, so I head down from the tree stand, and then... As I'm exploring around the general area, I feel something grab my shoulder and pull me to walk with it. My peripheral vision makes out two large, dark legs. I figured it was my cousin taking me back to his place because he finished hunting. Like I just had that feeling like I should go and that everything was fine. And then, as I'm walking with this thing i hear my cousin shouting my name from the direction that we just left which is the opposite direction whatever was walking me along just lets go of my shoulder and just bolts off into the woods this really jars me as a kid as i was so confused and then a few moments later my cousin bolts it toward me asking if I was okay, and we go straight back to his place. I figured it had only been a couple minutes, but it had been a couple hours. He tells his parents about what happened, and how he saw something with me, trying to coax me into walking in the opposite direction. Everyone looks concerned. I get a lot of hugs and people telling me not to run off like that again. To this day, I don't know what happened. I don't know what it was that walked me in the opposite direction. I don't know how I lost two hours. And I don't know where that thing, whatever it was, whoever it was, where it was trying to take me. This is something that happened one night that I was driving home from work. The road I take home from work is a road that the speed limit is 40 kilometers an hour, and it was around 10 p.m. I see this white creature on the side of the road looking to cross. I say creature, but originally I thought it was a large coyote or possibly a husky. So I slow down to a stop to let it pass. This thing turns and looks toward the car. My headlights reflect its eyes. It's white. And then it does something bizarre. Instead of crossing the road, it strafes sideways at an extreme speed while looking at me the entire time. It strafes to the side of my car. I turn around to see if it pops up behind the car. It pops up strafing behind the car, still looking at it. The brake lights are reflecting its eyes. I see it come close to the car and nudge it. And then it jumps in one fell swoop to the other side of the road and bounds off into the forest. At the time, I was too confused to really give a damn about what happened. But an hour later, I started freaking out because it was strafing sideways like a crab. It wasn't walking or moving like how you'd expect any person or dog or animal or anything to behave. And the way it looked at my car too, like it had never seen one before. This occurred about 10 years ago. I was home alone as my parents had gone to Rarotonga, which is in the Cook Islands. But anyways... It was around 11 p.m. There was a stone pathway next to my bedroom window, which makes quite a bit of noise when someone's walking on it. My friend was meant to come over that same night and said that he would knock when he was at my house. I hear something heavy hit the stone pathway, as if somebody jumped the fence. Then I hear slow walking over the stones. My dog is sleeping in my bedroom so it must be my friend. I hear tapping on my window. I say my friend's name. There's no reply. I hear more tapping. I say my friend's name again, 
Louder. No reply. The tapping continues until I say, Man, you're so bad at scaring people. I'm coming outside. So I go out the back door to let my friend in. The dog wakes up and comes with me. There's no one there. I'm thinking, what? That's weird. I go back to my bedroom. The TV is still on, but it's static now. And then suddenly, there's a huge bang, as if somebody jumped at my window with all of their body weight. I run out again to investigate, and what I see is not my friend, but a tall, and I mean very tall, figure standing right next to my window. It's almost as tall as the house, and it's still looking in my bedroom window. I leg it back into the house and out the front door to avoid this thing. I start running in no particular direction. I just needed to get away. My friend, who was meant to come over, sees me while driving past and picks me up. He says, dude, what are you doing out this late? I explain the story. His face drops. We both end up driving around, and he let me sleep in his car as I was too terrified to even get out of it and go into his house. And if you're wondering, my dog was fine by the way. When I went back the next day, the dog was confused but happy to see me. One afternoon, my buddy and I decided to go target shooting. Now the drive there and most of the walking in the woods was extremely uneventful, and I'll just skip that. But as we're out in the trees, we find this small abandoned hotel. We decided to enter it since we have ARs and we shouldn't get scared. It's just an abandoned building and we have these. Now all the floors are generally just empty concrete building stuff, nothing special. Most of the rooms look exactly the same. So our last stop was the basement. Now this whole time we're just joking around, talking about zombie apocalypses and all that stuff, and just enjoying our time together. So we're going down to the basement, talking and laughing and joking and all that. And it's full of old stoves. There's a freezer down there, a random spoon, some frying pans, and just some stuff like that in general. And we find this other entrance that's in the basement. It seems to lead down a small corridor. So we were using our normal flashlights during this, but it was extra dark. So my buddy turns on his M500LT. As soon as we enter this weird corridor, we freeze. There's something at the end of this corridor. It's a humanoid shape. It's on all fours, and it's baring its teeth at us. The longer we look at it, the more wrong it gets. All its limbs are bent weird, like a horse's or something like that. It's just really bizarre to see this thing. If it stood up, it would only be about five feet tall, so it wasn't even that big, but it was just terrifying to look at. We both aim our guns. But for some reason, neither of us can bring ourselves to pull the trigger. And before I know it, my legs are carrying me back up the basement stairs and out the entrance. My friend is just a few steps behind me. We try and rationalize this, but we can't bring ourselves to go back down there. Neither of us want to ever see that thing again. We end up going and essentially the opposite direction for about 10 minutes. We still do some target shooting, trying to loosen up and relax a bit. To this day, I don't know why we couldn't shoot that thing. We both had it right in our sights. At least for me, I'm not going back to that place. Just no. What's weird though, and I don't know if it's related, but there's an ongoing rumor now that some younger people are doing satanic rituals there and trying to do summonings. I don't know if they're related or not, but 
the whole thing is just super weird, and I'm never going back there. So this one night, I went to this abandoned farmhouse to try and have something paranormal happen to me. I went through the whole house and found basically nothing. I go into the attic to check the floorboards. Everything seems legit. So, I set up my tent up there and I get ready to spend the night. I pass out at around 2.30am. I wake up just a little over an hour later, hearing noises. It sounds like moaning, almost. Like the moaning as if somebody was mortally injured. I open my tent to pitch black. The moaning immediately stops. I close the tent. I lay back down. I grip my flashlight tight and pull out my knife and realize that this was really a dumb idea. Then I hear people downstairs. They sound like they're having a dinner party, giggling and laughing. I can't quite hear what they're saying though. I unzip my tent, poke my head out. Once again, it all stops. I get out and I slowly walk to the attic window. It's this small circular window. It's super dark outside. There are no cars or lights. As I have my back to the attic door, it's a small square door on the floor. It slams upwards and makes a sound so loud that it shakes the zippers on my tent. I basically drop a brick. I spin around, but the door is shut and nothing else happens. As I slowly walk over, I can hear that underneath my feet, the laughing and giggling begin again. I stop to listen, and I feel this massive gust of wind that seems to come under the floor, and then suddenly there's full out stomping running, going up and down the stairs, then to the ground floor, and then randomly back up to the third floor, and to the door to the attic. It slams again. I see it bounce off the floor. I almost fainted, to be honest. I begin to hear growls inside the attic with me. I run to the window, and I push the window open. Each floor of this old farmhouse has a small balcony. I pull myself out, and I begin to climb down. I basically fall from balcony to balcony. As I get on the grass, I can hear all the doors on the inside of the house are banging open and closed. I run down the driveway in the pitch black, wielding a knife. I left all my stuff there until the next day when me and two friends went and grabbed it all. But it doesn't end there. Fast forward a couple years later, and I have a family, or I'm trying to have a family. I just bought this really nice house. It was very old. It was red brick, two floors, and it had this crawl space like basement. The land was super nice. I initially bought it with the intention of severing the land and building a house to move into and then sell the one that I bought. But here's what happened while there. So I have a wife by now and we have a newborn daughter. I end up moving out of the brick house and into another one that had other bedrooms. So when the daughter gets old enough, we can have more kids. It was a really old house. The deal was insane, crazy even. So we move in and two months go by. We're fixing up the house. Suddenly, my wife begins acting very unlike herself. She's always sweet and kind, very motivated, very athletic. But during this time, she became impossible to deal with, lethargic, always angry, yelling at me, just shitting on everything I do. I'm basically going to work, coming home, doing renovations, and basically becoming very burnt out of the whole situation. And then... I wake up one Saturday morning at 3 o'clock in the morning. I hear noises. I feel shuffling. I wipe the tired from my eyes, and when I open them, I see my wife 
at the end of my bed, knelt over, very close to my face, staring at me. I freak out, turning on the lights, and I was like, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? Without hesitation, she stands up straight, walks around the bed, lays down, and immediately falls asleep, snoring really loudly, which she never really does that. So this whole thing goes on for about a month. It just starts to get worse. She starts acting weirder around the house. I hear her talking to herself in what seems to be two different voices, laughing to herself, conspiring, saying that she wants to do things to our child. At one point, I catch her in the backyard, having a full-blown conversation with herself, responses and all. I call my mom to come and pick up the baby. An hour later, my mom comes by, takes the kid, and leaves. I argue with my wife, and I eventually convince her to come out with me for dinner, to go out and get some air, just to leave the house for a while. We leave the house for hours, and something weird happens. She begins to act normal again. It's like the whole last month never happened. And not only that, she doesn't remember the last month. She doesn't remember anything from the house. None of the renovations. None of anything that we've done. None of how she's been acting. She seems completely normal. I tell her, to stay at my mom's house for the night, just to get out of there. She agrees. Now that night, I was in the house by myself. I don't exactly remember what I was doing in particular, but I begin to hear the same giggling and laughing from the old farmhouse. Everything was down to a T. The stomping, the door slamming. I knew something was obviously up. And like I said, the banging expanded to all over the house, laughing, yelling, everything. I ended up explaining everything to my wife. We both figured that something followed me. So basically, I call a priest one day, and after that blessing is complete, I organize to have someone from the local tribe come and bless the house as well. And then a Wiccan the next day to... Just get myself, my wife, the house, everything blessed. And after that, we even ended up selling the house just to make sure. No further things have happened. And I know to some, it may not seem super scary. But keep in mind how we were in this situation. It was terrifying. And it was the longest months of my life. So, let me know what you thought of those. These ones were a little shorter, but if you had a favorite one, let me know which one it was down in the comments. Do you have one of your own? As usual, I have an email in the description below that you can send them to if you'd like to. I also have a PayPal and a Patreon if you would like to donate and support the channel that way. And super thanks here on YouTube. And with that, I think I will see you in the next one. Thank you for pulling up a stump, and thank you for watching. Have a good week.